Hi, welcome to Bookie. Today we will unlock the book Why We Get Sick, The New Science of Darwinian Medicine. If you were given Genie's Lamp, what would be your three wishes? We believe that most people would save a wish for good health and a long life. For most of us, good health is a priority. There is a Chinese saying that goes health is one, while wealth, status, reputation, family, kinship, love, and others are a string of zeros that follow. This means that without health, other pursuits will instantly become meaningless. We may wonder, since health is so important, why is it that humans at the top of the food chain haven't evolved to have the highest life expectancy in the animal kingdom? Why does rapidly developing modern medicine remain helpless in the face of some diseases? Why do we still have fevers and allergies? The above questions can actually be boiled down to one big question, why do we get sick? Today we will find the answers to the question in this book why we get sick. This book was written by Randolph M. Nessie and George C. Williams. Both are leading figures in the field of evolutionary biology. Nessie is a practicing physician in the Department of Psychiatry at the University of Michigan Medical School. He is also the founding director of the Center for Evolution and Medicine at Arizona State University. The other author Williams was a professor emeritus of ecology and evolution at the State University at Stony Brook, New York. As a recipient of the Crawford Prize, he was regarded as one of the most respected American evolutionary biologists. He passed away in 2010. Before we delve deep into the content, let's look at two essential concepts used in the book, Proximate Explanation and Evolutionary Explanation. Approximate explanation is the main perspective taken by modern medicine to explain human diseases. It is concerned with the traits that are responsible for an individual's functional impairment, that is how illnesses specifically occur. An evolutionary explanation on the other hand takes a vastly different direction from approximate explanation. As the term suggests, it focuses on the analysis of why humans as a species have a disease from the perspective of human evolution, and why this disease-causing mechanism hasn't been eliminated during human evolution. Let's take heart attacks as an example. The proximate explanation of this disease is that heart attack patients consume fatty foods in great quantities and they carry the genes that predispose them to atherosclerosis but evolutionary explanations are more concerned with which genes are responsible for causing people to crave for fatty foods, which genes contribute to cholesterol deposition, and why natural selection hasn't eliminated these genes. It is also this evolutionary perspective that this book takes to discuss the human body disease, aging, and other problems. As modern medicine advances, we now have a lot of knowledge about various diseases, Yet we still find it hard to answer the big question, why do we get sick? If we look at this million-dollar question from an evolutionary perspective, we will find ideas to answer it. As American evolutionary biologist Theodosius Dobjonsky puts it, nothing in biology makes sense except in the light of evolution. Well, let's follow both expert scholars to find out exactly why we humans get sick. Part 1. External Factors That Cause Disease Part 2, Internal Factors That Cause Disease Part 3, The Inseparable Relationship Between Genes and Diseases We shall first discuss the external factors that cause disease. These are the most direct and understandable causes of our illnesses. They can be divided into three groups. The most prominent group is the ever-evolving pathogens. Pathogens are parasites and microbes that cause disease in an organism, of which microbes make up the vast majority. Microbes include bacteria, viruses, and fungi, such as mold, Escherichia coli, and rabies virus. They are widespread in nature, and some of them will invade the human body. At this point, the human body becomes a place for pathogens to survive, that is a host. More than 150 pathogens may infect a person in his or her lifetime. Pathogens and humans are at odds with each other, and their conflicts are inevitable. This fuels the continuous upgrades of their weapons and defenses, like in an arms race. Let's take an example. Perhaps the most remarkable medical advancement of the 20th century was the discovery and use of antibiotics. Antibiotics are